Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday, it's 6.30 in the morning. Guess where we're going today? <laughs> And now I'm in sunny London with my boy Yas. Hey, nice to be here. Thank you, Sean, for uh, coming down. No worries, man. Thank you so much. We've got something to show you. So fortunately today, as you know, I'm going to Duke of London with Yas. But most importantly, what we're going to be doing is going in that. <laughs> so tell us more about your awesome back day, man. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's based on a 79. SC, but it's been fully converted to a 74 3 liter RS or homage outlaw. So, just to bear in mind, we're going to talk a little bit about whilst on the right to Duke of London. If you can hear us. If you can hear us. Because Yas is doing everything he can <laughs> to gain an ASMO. <laughs> Thanks, Yas.
take it from me being a passenger in here, yes, it's very loud. Yes, it's um, not the softest suspension you're ever going to find. However, you know, one thing we discussed before, the tyres, nice, healthy sidewall and width on there. So it does, as you said, yeah. very soak up a lot of the bumps, the suspension. It works very well with it, so it's not too crashy, not too firm. It's 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 just right, very Goldilocks almost. Yeah. You know, we've also got um, the benefit of air conditioning with the windows <laughs> open. But this is a weekend car. This is not a daily. You could daily it. There's 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 that gent who dailies his uh, yeah. 911R yeah. up just yeah. up the road here in London, uh, and not even just a regular R. It's one of the original. Um, I suppose concepts as it were of yeah. the 911R and he uses it it's a daily driver you can use these cars daily whereas if we were to take a let's say um, a Ferrari a 246 Dino which is of the same era okay? yeah. or maybe even a 308 GTB which again is the same era as the, um, the the SC that this is based on could you take that around daily do you think no I don't Especially a Dino, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you put values aside, I just don't think reliability and practicality work for using a car like that on the daily. No. As much as I would love to. Um, the beautiful cars. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning cars. Not knocking Ferraris. I love Ferraris. Yeah, I'm, uh, we, I've always been a Ferrari kid as well. But, yeah. um, I think Porsche, just especially with the 911 platform, it gives you the best of both worlds and, and the reliability and the practicality. And even with this being a stripped out race car outlaw, you know, I can drive it to the track, have fun, drive it back. Yeah. And if I want to go pick up the groceries, I can. Perfect. Although, watch out for old people giving you door dents. As well as that bastard that parks next to you, but he parks all the way far to the end. Furthest corner. And he parks right next to you. Do you know what? It leaves you this much gap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In a Vauxhall. You're out there. <laughs> well, the uh, views shared by any of our guests are not necessarily shared by the cameramen or people behind Ren 11. But he's right. I'm just going to slow it down here. Yeah, we'll slow it down. Let's annoy the person behind us. He's in a Citroen anyway. No, he's not going to see us soon. Tunnel run. Three, two, one. Sell to restorations to detailing to a place to just chill out. 
open and meet fellow car guys and yeah. just relax. I think they've installed a new bar as well now. What? What? I think that's a, the, that's heaven. Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. Uh, yeah, no. Big, big shout out to the DOL team out there. I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal what they've what they've achieved. Um, and yeah, look, really looking forward to heading there now again. Cool, man. It'll be my first time to DOL as well. Um, but really looking forward to it. Sounds like it's going to be an epic day. Um, and it's just like you say, it's about being other enthusiasts.
rather than something like this. I, I don't know. That's a really. I, I kind of really dig this old school raw analog feel. Um, and as we discussed earlier, a lot of the new stuff just numbs that down, and you lose that sensation. Yeah. Um, um, and that's not only. And, and you got to look at way way the world's moving as well. We, we, we're going in an age where. Everything's going to go electric and hybrid and these petrol analog cars are never going to get built again. Yeah. And it's sort of a good timing to just enjoy it while we can before legislation and laws come in and, and where we're all doomed. It, it's frightening because you have people then say this is probably the last of an analog car like um, Gordon Murray with his latest supercar idea. Um, he's saying this is going to be the last analog car ever, and you you yeah. look at it and you think, wow, that's well, you it's scary up, in two reasons. What was it about? Yeah, sorry, oh no, no, I was just going to say it's scary for two reasons. One reason, you know, someone who is out and out a a car person, yeah. Gordon Murray, and he's synonymous with some of the greatest cars to hit a racetrack and a road ever is saying this and B there, there is an element of truth to it because we are moving away from fossil fuel cars yeah. you know um, hybrids only available to buy 2040 full electric no um, fossil fuel cars by 2050 yeah. so you know by the time and when we although we will be older by that time you know touch wood we, we reach that that wonderful age group there's that fear of, of like what are we gonna do next you know what there's a lot of uncertainty Especially for these these uh, classics and, and having analog cars. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's all dull and gloom or if there's always going to be a place in, in the world for these cars. I don't know. Um, but in terms of the new stuff, it's all moving electric. Obviously, you can get hit higher speeds. You can get faster acceleration. Yeah, it's the torque, um, it's the power. Yeah, exactly. It's like um, turning a light switch on. Correct. So it's sort of obsoleting the, the um, petrol engines, um, and even with modern day turbocharging, like naturally aspirated engines are dying out. Like your your big V12 naturally aspirated engines, yeah. what, you, what we you know admired in Lamborghini Countachs and Diablos and Ferrari Testarossas. There, you know, you're never going to see those getting built again. Yeah, that um, makes sense. I think uh, I oh look at that oh that's a beautiful nine nine Ooh. four four turbo running um, nine nine six wheels sport designs I don't know yeah they're the ones on the yeah nine nine six yeah nine nine six GT three star wheels yeah they are yeah oh that's good looks right looks nice. nice. um I, I suppose. I work in the automotive industry, as some of you know, and for me, I will have an electric car to go to work because the journey to work for me is I have to go to work, so yeah. I need that yeah. uh, electric car. So I'm looking at electric cars possibly as a company car or something else um, in the next uh, couple of years. But cars are so important to me that the 911 will be the weekend toy. The 911 will be the the play thing to. Yeah. Brag around it exactly. like this. Yeah, um, exactly. So I'm doing my bit for the environment because during the week I'm reducing my carbon footprint. You know, I'm, I'm charging the car up at work as well, and, and no problems. I'm not, I'm not spending too much money on it. It's, it's almost like real carefree motoring. It is, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, unless I decide to lick the orange cable that runs through the car. <laughs> but then you, you, you know. At the weekend, I can I can really enjoy a visceral yeah, experience. Gives you, gives you that driving pleasure that you've probably been muted out for the week. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not saying all electric cars are boring, but I just don't feel I don't feel the connection uh, until some. Until but I get it. I get we gotta we gotta move away. Yeah. Um, you know, we gotta save the planet. And there's a lot of things that we need to change as humans, mm. not only just in the automotive world, but in terms of what we do with our waste and, and oh, all everything. sorts. So, um, I understand the concept, but don't take 
a way classic cars from us, basically. <laughs> uh, you know, let's let's think about it logically. When was the last time we saw a law essentially passed 30 years prior to it coming in? I, I think I think this sets precedent almost yep. because we never look that far ahead, no, even as, no. as as humans, you know. I, okay, yeah, maybe we do with with investments and stuff like this. But this is this is a life changing thing for 100%. many people, you know. Um, Thirty years time, we are not gonna hear this unless it's something false that has been placed in there with a yeah. speaker, you know. Um, we're not gonna smell the smell that's coming from it, and believe me, it smells <laughs> glorious. Um, you know, is that eau de cologne? That's uh, eau de my exhaust. Uh, it's, it's, we, we really are in a position and a, 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 a place where this is, it's, it, it's putting more fear into us almost because of that long period of time that we've got until then. And it's almost like, but well, it's not enough. So does, does that change your, your approach to how you use the vehicle? Does that change your approach to your tasting cars? Does that change anything about the, the passion and love you have? Yeah, there'll be a, 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 a massive shift. Um, it's like technology, it's like how fast, if you look in every last 10 years, the technology leap in the last 10 years to the, last, to the previous 10 years, we're just moving at such a phenomenal rate as, as humans in terms of what we're developing as tech. Um, and it's, it's, everyone follows that shift. Like, I hate it as much as I love, you know, uh, using my phone for being a smartphone and using it for the joys of Instagram and networking and everything. But at the same time, it takes away from what's around you mm. and what who you should really be interacting, meeting people face to face. Um, and it's it's that shift that's happened. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've, we've hap it's happened so, unconsciously mm. over that last 10 years that it is scary what's going to happen in the next 10 years and then, then up to that 30 year plan if something's going to happen it will shift without us even knowing uh, yeah. just, and that will become the norm it is yeah if we look at the usage of, of like, social media and stuff like that in the last 10 years the shift and the change yeah um it's interesting though there seems to be uh going slightly off topic here but there seems to be a bit of a uh, a connection back into the social aspect of social media. Um, you look at, okay, so if we look at how we met, it's through Instagram, Correct. you know, um, and, and thereafter we um, then looked at, uh, you look at companies like, like Drew, Drew Manley from uh, Cool Collective, um, and he's like really firing all cylinders to keep, bring back the social part of social media. Definitely. Big shout out to Drew. Massive to shout out. Big following from Drew. Amazing, amazing page what you've created and yeah. the culture, dude. Yes, love um, it. We got huge supporters here, as you know me, Yas, Raj, um, Rob Grant as well. Um, we, we love you, man. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, fight the algorithm. I swear, do you know what? The next uh, phase in Marvel, it's going to be Drew versus the algorithm. And I will pay hat good money to watch that as well. Um, but, but you know, I wonder what Drew's superpower will be. Um, Drew's superpower? Hmm. He does have a very large head. <laughs> Drew, that's not my words. That's <laughs> the opinions of Ren 11 uh, are shared between occupants within this vehicle. He told me to say it. I know. Like, Shit. <laughs> uh, do you know what, Raj? Uh, you know, um, Drew's superpower will be love. He's that kid in Captain Planet with the with the heart ring, and he's just literally firing all cylinders. To, he uh, is, man. He shares love, love and passion. I, you know. You can see it from what he produces, right, on his page and, and what he set up as a blog and what he set up as his vlogs. And all his network, he, he's, I'll tell you what, Drew, your, your amazing persona to just meet people and interact, I think that is your, your power. Yeah. Like you are just so naturally good with people and sharing your ideas and, and uh, bringing a community together, mm. what you've done. And I think that's phenomenal. That's your superpower, man. Yeah. Bringing people together, sharing love. I hear that. Um, yeah. Oh, but also that head you got wicked at <laughs> white nine nine three man. And, <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, your, your car collection's sick. 
Yeah. <laughs> but you know, who told you to sell the 964, man? <laughs> yeah, who, who, uh, actually, yeah. who told you to do that? Yeah, why, why did you do that? Oh well. Hey, maybe one day 964s will come down and. <laughs> no, they won't. Uh, <laughs> you better run off your own back, brother. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's it, this is the thing. So, so going back to the whole social media aspect of it, there seems to be uh, an emergence of people using social media to be social again and not doing it for their own. Um, own, uh, yeah, the they're, they're becoming a, a uh, influencer and all that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, one well, of the things. There was an article uh, yesterday actually on BBC about a guy who sells ice cream. Um, and he was charging influencers double the price because he was he was sick and tired of people just basically trying to uh, use their influencing capabilities from their social media pages of X thousand or what X million followers that they've got to get free produce. And it's like we live in a world where that's it's become like oh yeah, get fake followers, get all this. Um, and you're entitled to three things in life. Well, I think that's absolute bollocks, man. It is bollocks. Bullshit. I mean, hold on a second. So, this person provides a service. The reason they provide a service is because this is their role, this is their job, this is their livelihood, this is the money that they earn, this is the money that they have. So, you know, because of that, they're moving forward. That's what they want to do. They, they're doing it. Yes, they do it because they love it, but also, it's we need money to, to earn things. Sadly, magic beans don't quite cut it in London anymore no, um, to, to buy stuff. Uh, and the likelihood of selling 12, 13 camels, so I'm half Lebanese, um, or 12 portions of hummus to buy a house are, are long gone. Hey, I love hummus. Man. Who doesn't love hummus? <laughs> uh, people who don't love hummus, I don't trust you. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, we, you need money to survive, you know. Um, you need money to live. Yeah, so yeah, as a growing business as well, I'm sure this guy with the ice cream stores is growing, growing business, um, got unique products. And to just, I, I get it, you get that self promotion, but a lot of these Instagram accounts have just become so fake, so, yeah. you know, um, not materially to actually influence it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, a guy who might have. I don't know, say 5,000 followers, but they're real people. So his so his ability to influence is gonna be far superior than someone who's got 30,000 on their page, but then only literally about 200 real people that would actually follow and, and influence on the product that they're trying to promote. Yeah. Um, and I think I think the industry is starting to cut on as well. Um, I think people are starting to cut on with that as well. Something though- but, when you're when you've got a page and you're let's say you're setting up a t-shirt company or what you know apparel or whatever you're trying to sell and uh, having thirty thousand or uh, you know one million followers just gives you that attraction. So I get why people fall into that trap. Of it's all about numbers, but for me it's about me, the people behind it. Yeah, completely. It's, it's all about the people behind it. Oh man, it's all about the people. What what, what would I? Ren Eleven would not exist. If it wasn't for cool people, yes, it's Porsches, it's great. But how many other pages out there share? And I, I admit, I do share a lot of content because it's some of the things I think look cool, and I want other people to see them. But I always tag people and make sure that everyone's yeah. loved. Um, but but you know, when people run a business, so we'll, we'll go back. I'm going back to you, Drew, and even Mike and Aaron from P Car Talk. So they sell T-shirts and whatnot. They sell bits and pieces to go back into the business of what they're doing. Sorry, my cable's getting. In. Um, which you know, it's it's all feeding itself to, to to ensure that they can release good content, get better content, and move forward. If I was to ask someone, it doesn't matter who they are, a small company, a small business, and this is who they are, bearing in mind, for a freebie, what I'm essentially doing is taking money out of you know their pocket. Their pocket, their, their, their family's mouths, you yeah, know. Exactly. It's not fair, it's not right. I wouldn't dare dream of it. If it's a bigger business, if they say, I'll give it to you free, then great. Yeah. If it's a smaller business, say they give it to me free, I would actually struggle because I'd be like, uh, I don't feel exactly. good. Uh, a friend of mine who, who uh, um, used to service my cars, um, whenever he said, I'll do it for you for this, I thought, like, it doesn't feel comfortable, can I give you more? 
does that make sense? Yeah. Because yeah. I, he's he's not um, a branded business in the sense of he, he's not a uh, Volkswagen or a Porsche company. Okay. He is his own outfit. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm giving Gibby a bit more. But he, he looked after me, and that's great. But I can't. It feels bad. Yeah. So I know, I know the feeling. So that that ice cream guy. I, I'd say charge four times the amount. Yeah, you know, if they're exactly. social, they, can you imagine leading it? I'm a, an influencer. You're not influencing me, mate. That's it. Yeah, completely agree with it. I think I think the world's starting to cotton on to that side of social media. Really, yeah. they're taking the piss. Completely. Completely. And we're here. We're here. Hey. <laughs>